They all only did it like this. Bruce says, Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, during the course of the week, uh, I was called that my sister, she was with child that she was taken to the hospital, that she has IPP, her PT was reading 180. You know, so uh, that she might just have to be uh, operated on and be very out to safeguard the baby and the child. I came here, wrote the prayer request, I dropped it here last Friday. And to the glory of God, in the course of the week, she gave birth, both baby and mother are fine. To the glory of God, I be to God. Again, on Sunday, I woke up very early trying to prepare to come to church. And I let me just sweep a portion of the house before I, I start you know, preparing. And I just started hearing the smell of gas. I went into the kitchen and I realized that one of the knobs was turned on since the previous night. And I just told my wife, this and this has happened, don't do this, don't do that. And I told her, it's possible there's no more gas in this cylinder. I thought the cylinder shook it. And, and when, she, when I saw her, she told me the gas was still there. And up until now, we are still using the gas. Praise God. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. I want to thank God for for my father. Two weeks ago, my eldest brother came and gave a report that thank God for his life. Because when he packed his car, I it just didn't even know. But uh, this thing, the building just fall on the car. But I want to thank God that it was not in the car. Because it was only his car that the building just fell on. No other. So I just, just don't know me that it's just an attack. But I to thank God that it was not in the car. Amen. Like you know, the glory in Jesus. Oh, Praise the name of the Lord. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. Yesterday, while going to walk around um, a chicken there, there's this part where I usually pick. And there's an overhead iron. In front of me, usually I go through it, but yesterday, I don't know, just with a lot of force, I just went head on with the iron and I went down straight. I just thank God that I, I'm healthy and the, the bleeding is stopped and the pains in the head are reduced. Yeah, the swelling yeah. is reduced. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Lord is perfect. I've perfected your hair. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul and I want to thank God on behalf of my nephew. In US, he was born with cataract on two eyes, so he was operated. And then I want to thank God for my younger brother, the lawyer. He fell and hit his head. Then he started convulsing. He kept on having the seizure. But today, I thank God that the seizure was no more there. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. I want to thank God for adding money to my husband on Monday. I want to thank God also for giving him safe journey. Immediately after the birthday, he said it was, he told Pastor was going to travel. And me, I was scared because you know one thing about after celebration. So I just prayed over it. And also Pastor prayed and thank God for bringing him home safely. Amen. And then I want to also thank God for some particular vital uh, material things that were actually making me shame. I want to thank God for him fulfilling those material things Amen. in my life. Amen. And you will be all good. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the salvation of my soul. I was about to sleep yesterday and my phone rang. It was my daughter that called me from Canada just to give me the story that uh, she has been giving permanent residence. Oh, Who did all this? Jesus! Oh my God! And let's pray that the Almighty God, that has given them this, will not allow the enemy to even reduce the chocolate of taking any of them again. <coughs> and let's pray that every ear that already heard this testimony shall have testimonies in their own lives too, concerning whatever area of challenge that they have. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. <coughs> Praise the Lord. I don't know, my heart is just rejoicing with the song. Maybe before we just go into the, the great exhortation, you will just join me to sing. You be faithful. You be faithful. Worship. Okay.
the reason for that somebody it just it's all just came to my heart. That means that before tonight, somebody will see the taking of God. We started yesterday about the topic behind the scene, part one. And we took our reading from the book of 2 Corinthians 4.18. 2 Corinthians 4, 18, but said that we should not look at the things that we are seeing. But we should look at the things that cannot be seen. Because the things that cannot be seen, they are they carry weight more than the one that we are seeing. Therefore, you should not allow any negative thing that you are seeing to shake you. Because behind the scene, God is working. Actually, yesterday we started with behind the scene, <clears throat> telling us that there are two forces in life. And we said that they are, they are, the elders from where I am from are be saying that what is behind six is more than seven. You have eight. You have 25. You have one million. You have 10 million. You have one billion. So, so many. But immediately you look at, at behind six, you see seven. And you just conclude, ah, you just saw this seven. No, there are so many things. Meaning that there are more to life than what we can see. And we said that the things that appear, they are being generated from the realm of the unseen. Hebrews 11, 3, we read that yesterday. That the things that appear, they were not created from the things that appear. We talk about the cell phone. We talk about the aeroplane. These happen to be products of people's mind. We can see those products, but we cannot see the mind that brought them forth. That the things that cannot be seen, they carry much power. Whenever you see a structure standing, the building standing, what is making that building to stand is actually the foundation. We don't see the foundation. There is no building that is standing that you can see the foundation with your physical eyes. But it's because of the foundation that you cannot see that is making that building to stand. And in life, many things that make people to stand, whatever things that they stand, they are actually in the realm of your sin. And we say that the devil also likes to go through that realm to cause havoc in people's life. That sometimes some people go through so many troubles in their life because of what the devil is doing in the realm of the unseen. And we said yesterday <coughs> that the devil has the case file of everybody. He knows the weakness of all the weaknesses in some cases of everybody. And he assigns demons to each person concerning the, if this person's weakness is money, is lost, is easily offensive. Ah, we just assign the kind of demon that will cause people around, even they are not also <clears throat> family member, they will be annoying the person. So that the person's spirituality will be low. And the person cannot spiritually attract that blessing. The, the just a scheme. And we told us about football. <clears throat> that you will notice that the coach will always assign some players, a particular player that they see to be that he seems to be dangerous or a threat to them. And you'll be wondering that since they are eleven players, or maybe ten on the pitch and on one uh, keeper, that at least one player should mark, but it's not like that. <laughs> now that you see four people on a particular person because he knows that if that guy should just go, he will score. So you see, sometimes they will even bring them down. They don't mind for the person to be carried out or to be wheeled out. He said, no problem. As long as this guy will not be giving chance. And some other people, you don't see much people marking them. And in life, there are some people that are like that. If their glory is so much, the devil marks them with so many challenges. And they should see that it's not just those challenges that they should be mindful of. They should be mindful of addressing it in the realm of the spirit. And we said that sometimes the people are busy mopping up water, but not shutting the tap, that is producing the water. Then they get stressed and say that, how long will I deal with this particular issue? Whereas it is being generated in the realm of the spirit. But we concluded yesterday that we thank God that even though the devil may be doing it own, but God also has 
some things prepared for us in the realm of the spirit. The servant of Elijah, he woke up, he saw the horses, the horses and the people that have come to arrest them. But Elijah told him that relax. Let God open your eyes. And God opened his eyes. And he saw that there were also horses of fire and chariots of fire that they could not see with their physical eyes. And those helped them to calm the situation down. I'm praying that regardless of the attack of the enemy in your life, let the power of God manifest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And then let the power of God manifest. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to be looking into continuing the attitude of the, uh, the positive one that we just started briefly yesterday when we mentioned Elijah and the servant. We're going to look briefly today at Genesis 21, maybe 14 to 20. But because of our time, I will just read 19. Genesis 21, 19. In this particular place, a guy had been sent out with, with a son by Abraham. Because Sarah said that this woman and the, the child will not live in the same house with them. And Abraham sent her out with a bottle of water and bread. How will you use a bottle of water to go to, to cross a desert in wilderness? Wickedness in a kind of way. <laughs> because the water got finished for her and the baby. And the baby was already there, was already crying for water. And the woman had no water. And nowhere to go. No water around. Only then in the desert, in the wilderness. And she put the baby aside. Let me I don't see this baby dying. And she was crying, the baby was crying. Then it was. Then God now spoke from heaven that why are you really? I've already heard the cry of the lad. And the Bible said that God opened her eyes. She had been looking for water. I'm not sure that she, if that well had been there in the physical realm, she would have seen that well close by. But what happened behind the scene? God was working on her behalf. And God opened her eyes. And she saw a well of water. <laughs> and she went and filled the bottle with water. And gave the lad drink. 20. <clears throat> And go what we did not. And he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. I don't know in any area of your desire that you have been panting and you have not even gotten result. Let the Almighty God manifest Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Behind the scenes, so many things happen. Behind the scenes. That is why you should know that even when you think that God is not working, God is still working on your behalf. Jesus Christ said something in the book of John chapter 7, John chapter 5, verse 17. John 5, 17. He said that my father worketh. In that way I walk. What that is saying is my father is still working. And I am still working. You may not see us working, but I we are working. Joseph was in the prison and he felt abandoned. Because even though those guys, when you get there, nobody, but even while it seemed as if nothing was happening, God was working on his behalf in the palace, was giving Pharaoh dream, and was ensuring that nobody would be able to steal the dream. He was ensuring that it would only be him that would be able to tell the dream. So they know how they will not connect him. Even when you cannot see, God is still working behind the scene. That is the message God has sent me to somebody. Wherever you are, God is working. David was in the bush, and Prophet Samuel was about to anoint the children that the father has presented. He just felt abandoned, forsaken. But even in his absence, God was still working. And God threw the mouth of Samuel and said, We will not sit down until this guy will come. He did not even know they were even talking about it. I'm prophesying to your life that today you will be talked about in your place of death. In the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, they just said, you just saw maybe the brother, I don't know who could, they will have said to go and call him. But since they said that all of them will sound, so that means that there must have been the servant or somebody that said that, ah, they are calling you. He said, for what? Uh, you are the one that will be anointed for the king. You will not believe it. 
So God has been mindful of me. I prophesy that the mindfulness of God will show me your life. Amen. I just of me, particularly, she was driving on the highway and the car broke down. No broke down. She had a flat tire. And you know that, even as a man, I, I don't like changing flat, uh, flat tire. <laughs> but I just have to change if I find myself in that situation. And talk place of a woman. The woman will not, and the express. And the time, it was already getting to evening. Only her. And she got down. She was just annoying that. Oh, why, why, why? And she had to go to a particular place, you know, where I think she was moving from one state to another state. And she got and she looked at the car. All of a sudden, a, a car just passed. And a guy, a young guy, like her, ah, just came. Said, ah, this guy, this is not the kind of time that this, let this guy just go. And the guy said, ah, to cut the long story short, the guy offered to help. And one thing led to the other, they exchange number. One thing led to the other, they started calling each other. One thing led to the other, they walked to the other one day. One thing led to the other, they are now a family with children. Even in the period of the problem, it was to her, it was just something, but the flat tire has now brought her new thing. I don't know the kind of flat tire you have had, though. but God is going to convert it to celebration. Behind the scene, behind the scene is that you may not see the work that God is doing, but He's doing it anyway. Whenever you go to the theater and they are actually doing live drama, you see that from that they drop cutting. When you they drop cutting, you don't even know that they are arranging the place for bedroom scene or maybe for dining room scene. The last thing that you saw was something else. By the time you draw the cutting, you see another thing. I promise to your life, the Lord is about to draw your body. For your ready made blessing in the name of Jesus. One agent of God's behind the scene manifestation is the Holy Spirit. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, there is power for you to start seeing what has been behind the scene. He said that eyes have not seen, what your eyes have not seen, what your ears have not heard. But it's the Holy Spirit that can make you to see it as you continually charge yourself with the Holy Spirit. You just say that all those things in the realm of the unseen, they will start manifesting. Shall we rest your feet and just bless the name of the Lord and pray and say, Father, everything that you have richly provided for me in the realm of the unseen, and let them start manifesting in the name of Jesus. Let them manifest. Let them manifest. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you for all that you have done already. You have made us to realize that even when it seems you are not even doing anything, you are walking, you just want to draw the curtain after the thing has been perfected. Father, let this be done in our lives. Amen. Even before the next time we we'll meet which in this early February, at least that is Monday, let us have testimonies. Amen. Everyone that has come this morning, and everyone that is listening to us, wherever they are, all over the world, in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Amen.